our face is our most visible feature. The signs of facial aging can greatly affect how we feel about ourselves and how others see us. Aging in the face includes a loss of firmness, sagging tissues, and resulting expression lines and wrinkles. All of these conditions can make you appear sad and tired even when you are not. There are many factors that contribute to the loss of a youthful appearance, including heredity, gravity, environmental conditions, and stress. A facelift, also referred to as rhinodectomy, is a surgical and tissues of the face, sometimes called the SMAS, redistributing or reducing facial fat and tissues of the face, sometimes called the SMAS, redistributing or reducing facial fat and reducing excess sagging skin. A facelift often can erase years from the face, creating a more youthful, rested, and vibrant appearance. The procedure addresses sagging of the mid-face and can soften the appearance of a tear trough. It also treats sagging of the area between the nose and mouth, known as nasolabial folds, and corrects fat displacement and descent that collects in pockets, exaggerating facial creases. A facelift also addresses the loss of tone in the lower face or jaw area and can improve loose skin and excess fat deposits under the chin and jawline that give the appearance of a double chin. Through this process, the neck skin is lifted and tightened. A facelift does not, however, change your fundamental appearance and does not stop the aging process. Following a facelift, aging will continue naturally. However, as you age in the future, you should always look younger than you would if you had not undergone a facelift. Additional procedures to rejuvenate your appearance are commonly performed in conjunction with a facelift. They include a brow lift to correct a drooping and or deeply furrowed brow and eyelid surgery to rejuvenate the eyelids and the areas surrounding your eyes. In some cases, facial implants may be inserted at the time of a facelift to recontour the facial structure or soft tissue augmentation using fat or fillers may be performed to restore facial fullness that has been lost with aging. Resurfacing techniques may be used to improve the surface appearance, tone, and texture of facial skin. In addition, injections of Botox, botulinum toxin type A, may be recommended prior to your facelift to help underlying muscles fully relax before repositioning and tightening. These injections may also be recommended after your surgery to help maintain results. This program presents an overview of surgical facelift or rhinodectomy. It is not a substitute for a complete consultation with a plastic surgeon certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery or the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada. A facelift is best performed on adult men and women who feel that their outward facial aging no longer reflects the youth and vigor they feel physically and emotionally. Good candidates for this procedure are individuals who do not have life-threatening illnesses or medical conditions that can impair healing. A patient who smokes is at increased risk of poor healing and therefore is advised to stop smoking for several weeks before and after surgery. A consultation with a board-certified plastic surgeon, a member of the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, who may also be a member of the American Society for Aesthetic Plastic Surgery, is the first step to learn how facelift surgery can enhance your appearance and improve your self-image. A consultation is designed to fully educate you regarding your facelift procedure and includes a discussion of your goals, the options available to rejuvenate your appearance the likely outcomes of a facelift, and potential risks or complications. Your surgeon will also describe the procedure and answer your questions. During a consultation, you'll be asked to share your expectations for your surgery and your personal health history. Full disclosure of your health history is important for your safety. You should inform your physician of any serious illnesses or medical conditions affecting you or your family. And you must also be candid about your current medications, vitamins, herbal supplements, alcohol, tobacco, and drug use. By making the decision to consult with a board-certified plastic surgeon and following your doctor's recommendations, you are taking an important step in helping to ensure your safety. A board-certified plastic surgeon is a physician who is specifically trained in plastic surgery of the face and entire body. Prior to surgery, it is important to discuss with your surgeon any questions and concerns you may have regarding your surgery. In addition, you will be asked to sign informed consent documents. These documents assure that you fully understand the procedure you will undergo and the potential risks and complications. 
In addition, you must commit to precisely following all of the instructions you are given. Instructions include pre-surgical considerations such as testing and medications, day of surgery requirements, and specific information related to the use of anesthesia. You will also review post-operative care and follow-up. A facelift may be performed in an accredited office-based surgical facility, an accredited ambulatory surgical facility, or a hospital. The decision for anesthesia will be based on the requirements of your specific procedure and considerations of patient and surgeon preference. A facelift procedure begins with an incision on either side of the face, just inside the hairline at the temples, continuing along or just inside the front of the ear and around the earlobe. The incision then follows upward behind the ear and usually continues horizontally to end in the lower scalp. Your incision may be continuous or only certain segments of the incision pattern may be made depending on the areas of the face to be treated, the amount of excess skin that must be reduced, and the shape of your hairline and sideburns. Through the facelift incisions, underlying facial muscle, fascia, and other tissue is repositioned to restore a more youthful, uplifted position. Fat in the face may also be repositioned, or excess fat is removed from the face and neck. A second incision under the chin may be used, if necessary, to further improve the neck. Skin is then redraped over the uplifted and rejuvenated contours, and excess skin is trimmed away. The incisions are then closed. An alternative facelift technique for individuals who don't require significant skin reduction may use shorter incisions at the temples. The mid-face may be elevated through an incision within the lower eyelids or inside the mouth, under the upper lip. An endoscope or surgical telescope may help your surgeon to reposition tissues and elevate mid-facial muscles. Possible complications associated with a facelift include bleeding beneath the skin called a hematoma or correctable hair loss at the incisions. Less common are skin loss, irregular or raised scars, temporary or permanent facial nerve injury, and the potential for infection. There are risks associated with anesthesia that your surgeon will discuss with you as well. Once surgery is complete, a bandage may gently be placed around your face to minimize swelling and bruising. A thin tube may be used to drain any excess fluid that may collect under the skin. In some cases, you may wear a dressing to gently support and compress the facial contours as they heal. Often, patients are released to go home within a few hours of facelift surgery. In some cases, however, your surgeon may wish for you to stay overnight in a special recovery center or hospital for your comfort and to monitor your condition. Before being released, you and an accompanying family member, friend, or caregiver will be given specific instructions that may include how to care for facial skin following surgery, medications to apply or take orally to aid healing and reduce the risk of infection, specific changes to watch for at the surgical site or in overall health, and when to follow up with your plastic surgeon. Initial healing may include swelling, bruising, facial numbness, and discomfort that can be controlled with medication. In addition, your skin may feel tight and your facial movements restricted. These are common conditions and are temporary. Your physician will instruct you to keep your head elevated at all times until initial swelling subsides. You will be provided specific post-operative instructions, including how and when to cleanse your face and hair. Following these instructions is essential to the success of your outcome. A return to light, normal activity is usually possible within a few days of surgery. Incisions are healed within a week, at which time any sutures will be removed. You will be ready to return to work and most normal activity sometime between two to four weeks. Cosmetics can camouflage any bruising or redness that remains. Healing will continue for several weeks as swelling continues to resolve and incision lines further improve. Diligent sun protection is recommended during the healing process and is imperative if you have had skin resurfacing in conjunction with your facelift. Follow your plastic surgeon's instructions and attend follow-up visits as scheduled. It may take up to six months for incision lines to mature and fade, by that time, you will already be enjoying the results of your facelift. Lifelong sun protection will help to maintain your rejuvenated, more youthful appearance. 
you should feel revitalized by your freshened appearance, a facial appearance that reflects the energy and confidence you feel. If you are like most facelift patients, you will find that even as you continue to age, the benefits of facial rejuvenation are long-lasting. Choosing to undergo a facelift or any plastic surgery procedure, whether cosmetic or reconstructive, is an important decision. So is selecting a plastic surgeon. Not all doctors who perform plastic surgery or who use the title of plastic surgeon are board certified in plastic surgery. In order to be certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery, a physician must graduate from an accredited medical school and then complete a minimum of five years of surgical training, including an accredited plastic surgery residency program. The physician must pass a comprehensive written and oral exam in order to become a board certified plastic surgeon. The American Society of Plastic Surgeons and the American Society for Aesthetic Plastic Surgery have prepared this educational program to supplement your personal consultation with a plastic surgeon who is certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery or the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada. Plastic surgeons with this certification have completed approved surgical training and rigorous examinations in plastic surgery, including both cosmetic and reconstructive procedures of the face and entire body.